Welcome to this episode of Engineering Success Profile Editions. Today we're joined by the amazing uh, Charisma Jane, who's a chartered me mechanical engineer, uh, and she's going to discuss her role as a project manager uh, for TFL. Uh, hi Charisma, and welcome to the show. Hi Jamie. Hi, can we start with, why did you choose a career in engineering? Oh, why did I choose? Uh, so I really enjoyed maths and physics at school. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do beyond that. Right. Um, I went on a, um, it was like a women into science and engineering, one of the wise kind of, it was like an open day at UMIST, uh, university. Right. And I don't know, I think I, I think I enjoyed the kind of the two nights out in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I learned a little bit about engineering and I was like, that'll do. <laughs> um, not, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Um, but knew that it was a broad enough career that was mostly maths and physics, which is what I wanted. Yeah. I didn't really want to do anything that was solely maths or solely physics. So I wanted something fairly broad because I didn't really know what sort of career I wanted to go into. So I wanted to, I guess, keep my options open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what route did you take into engineering? Uh, a fairly traditional route. Um, so I went to school, got my A-levels and decided I wanted to go to university and uh, went to the University of Leeds. Right. I think back then apprenticeships weren't really, they weren't really advertised. Okay. Um, and if they were, they definitely weren't really for people like me. Right. Um, they were kind of more, I went to a girls' school, so okay. I didn't really hear about apprenticeships, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and there definitely wasn't the apprenticeship levy back then either. Right. Um, so for me, that was the only kind of real option that was given to me. Um, and bearing in mind that I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I thought, oh, I spent three years, four years at university, and then I'll figure it out. <laughs> Right, okay. So, so you're obviously a project manager now. What, what skills do you think uh, are needed to be a project manager? Um, so I guess, I guess I've built quite a lot of skills up from when I first started. So I'm a project manager in a railway environment at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I have, I've come up from, I guess, a very, from a junior route. So I started uh, a grad scheme at Balfour BC. I spent yeah. 10 years with Balfour BC. Yeah. So I was a, a site engineer delivering track renewals. Um, and I essentially worked my way up. So I, I was a, a junior engineer, uh, a lead engineer, a senior engineer. Yeah. Then I was a construction manager. Right. Um, and then it got to the point where I was leading, or yeah, I was a site manager controlling the you know, the machines, the people, and making sure that we were um, on programme. Right, yeah. So essentially that journey has given me quite a lot of skills in understanding the railway environment, um, the safety aspects, yeah. um, the construction, um, the standards, all of, all of that kind of picture. Um, and I'm using that knowledge in a, a project management uh, role now so right. yeah yeah i think i've been doing the engineering side for quite some time i'd probably say i don't know maybe 10 years and i felt like i needed to learn it to learn something from a different perspective yes yeah. so i moved across into a strategy role which right. gave me a real big picture um it and i it allowed me to kind of um build a strategy for how we were to deliver track for the, yeah. the next five years and I found yeah. that really interesting right and then basically once I'd had enough of that I, I thought I'd go into project management and I guess okay. all of those skills together have kind of been really useful for me right um, and kind of helped me in my role today yeah so so what does your role actually entail then uh so my job title is senior project manager, yeah. which I guess doesn't necessarily mean much to so many different job titles with so many different companies. 
yes, they yes. can mean one thing and then mean something else in another company. Yeah. So essentially, I am responsible for renewing track and drainage infrastructure, uh, right. and I'm jointly responsible for this. There's, I think, there's one, two, three. There's four of us in total. Okay. And we're jointly responsible for renewing that infrastructure across the whole of the London Underground network. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So track uh, has a, a lifespan of about 40 to 50 years. Right. So, and parts of the, the LU railway, are, LU, sorry, London, the London Underground yeah, Railway, yeah, yeah. is about 150 years old. Right. So there's track that, there's a lot of track that becomes life expired and hence we need to replace it so yeah. that it can last for another 40 to 50 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um does your role involve uh, going out on site and, and if so how long do you spend on site how long do you spend in the office or does it depend on the project at that time um if i go back when i was in a different role um <laughs> right. then, then i'd be rostered on and i would be um i'd be on site so for railway projects yeah. you essentially shut the railway down at nights and at weekends yeah um so when i was in my engineering roles i'd always be the working those shifts and there'd be rostered shifts right um but now i'm in a more of a, an on-call capacity okay so if uh, i guess if something was to go wrong then i'd be on call um and we would be trying to work a solution so uh to kind of prevent the problem from happening any further right right yeah so you're a chartered mechanical engineer and your role now is project manager so do you think that highlights the breadth of uh, interchangeable skills that engineers have definitely so um i think for me engineers have so many skills um half the time i don't think we even realize how many we do have i think <laughs> we're always we're always questioning things we always want to know we're always challenging things we always want to know how things work yeah. and why what why is it like that um and i think with that curiosity um i think it kind of just helps you have those skills as an engineer yeah and then yeah. obviously bringing that back into the project management kind of um world all of those skills are absolutely transferable yeah um and you can always learn technical skills on a job yes you can't learn all of the other i guess the softer skills around it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so so for you what's the most challenging part of being a, a project manager um i think for me um red tape and blockers so my, <laughs> okay. my role my role is to unblock things yeah uh I'm essentially a problem solver, um, but sometimes there are, I don't know, standards or things that I don't want to say get in the way, but um, there are some things that you need to unblock and right. for me that's a challenge, but also at the same time it then is quite rewarding once you've kind of unlocked it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I guess a, a challenge and a, a and a, a reward at the same time yeah i think other things that are challenging are so if i'm on call and things are going wrong um you're not necessarily on site at that time yeah so you need to be able to quickly picture the site understand where you are in that program yeah and you you need to really use the people that are on the ground they've got everything there in front of them yeah they yeah. can see everything yeah so just being able to kind of draw their they're the ones that are going to know what to do best yeah. I, i'm not there yeah. um but just asking those questions and looking at the long term looking at what's happening a little bit in the future of the program so what's going to happen in two or three hours time yes and trying to kind of help in bringing a solution together um yeah. i think that's that's quite a challenging bit another i think another bit is around safety right so safety is really important um and i think 
you know, we've, we've got to a point where we've got lots of rules, we've got loads of standards, everyone knows what the rules are. Yeah, yeah. But for me, it's probably more about the culture. Right. So okay. how, how do we improve the culture so that it's not just me going out on a safety tour and saying that's not quite right. It's everyone on site. Yeah, yeah. Pointing yeah. each other. Uh, and I'm not quite sure we're there yet. Right. Yeah. So, so for you, you, you touched on uh, one of the rewards. What, what other uh, parts of your job are really rewarding? Um, well, I guess if we focus on the, um, the projects themselves. Yeah. So if we've, um, if we've renewed a bit of track, which was if you'd ridden it on a train beforehand and you'd notice the noise, the ride quality and then you then ride the same journey afterwards yeah knowing that smoothness is because of what you put in the ground yeah, is yeah. quite rewarding yeah and i guess in a funny way i think when we're not talked about is also quite rewarding so the okay. only time we get talked the only time we get talked about is if we've overran yeah. Yeah, and yeah, we end yeah. up in the standard or you know um or we're on the tannoy um, in a station because of over overrun engineering works. Yeah, yeah. So for me, <laughs> when none of that is around, that's quite a, it's quite a reward for me. Yeah. Um, and then I guess just having a team and being able to support a team and being able to develop them and just kind of, I don't know, watching your team grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we know it's important that to to attract new talent into engineering careers. What would your message be to a young person that was thinking about going into engineering or who hadn't thought about engineering? Um, so I think for me, always use your best skills. So um, you've got to do this for the rest of your life. Mm. Um, and for me, I find the most successful people are people that actually really enjoy what they do. Yeah. So you, you have to enjoy this for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, are the, what are the things that are really kind of your best qualities? And what do you want to do? You know, are you always really inquisitive? Yeah. Are you always wanting to know how things work? You know, all of those things point you in that kind of direction yeah. um, and I would probably say try things out so you may think you also um, really want to be an engineer or you think you might want to be a project manager yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean you did enjoy it so yeah. if you get a chance at an internship um, and you're able to try stuff out I think that's really useful. Um, yeah. I think when I finished university, for some reason, for some bizarre reason, I decided that I didn't want to go into engineering right. and I wanted to go into accounting. Okay. No idea why. <laughs> um, so I decided to get a job in an accountancy firm. Right. And it was the worst mistake. I was just sitting at my desk uh, on a spreadsheet and I thought, is this it? Is this what I'm going to be doing? Yeah. Um, so then went back to engineering and I was like, right, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, definitely try things out. You may think you want to do something, but you probably you might not want to do it. Try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and finally, just just a more a more general question, really. You know, there's going to be a lot of students going for interviews. Maybe their first interview with 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 anybody outside of uh, university. Have you got any tips that you'd give a young person uh, prior or during an interview that, that that maybe you've used? Um. So I guess am I allowed to go back to the CV thing? Yes. Yeah. Gosh, can yeah. Um, so I guess for the CV, so I, I see a lot of CVs um, and I think for me too many words, so right. always think about it from the other person and, and I never did this, it's only been recently when, I've, when I'm sifting through CVs myself that your thought process really changes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess a tip would be if you ever get a chance to do some judging or sifting 
some requirements for something, try it out because it automatically changes your thought process. Yeah. And you actually appreciate what someone's having to sift through to try and find. So if you're applying for a job, most of the time that person's got a list of things that they need to be able to tick off yeah. and they need to be able to find it on your CV and your covering letter. If it's not there, you're not going to pass that process. Yeah, yeah. Um, so clear, concise, fit, fit the job. Um, but also don't have the most important thing at the back of the page <laughs> at the bottom. Yes, yeah. Whatever your whatever your most amazing things that you've done for the last, uh, you know, wh whatever you're proud of, stick it in bold at the top. Yeah. Big letters. Um, yeah. I, I just see a lot of things on CVs. And I'm like, well, why isn't this at the front? Why, yeah, yeah. why is it at the yes. back? Yeah, yeah. And then I guess for interviews, um, so I guess really, really difficult one, but try and relax. Yeah. try and make some eye contact um for interviews you generally get a couple of intro questions yeah they're generally going to be the same you know tell me a little bit about yourself yeah yeah so there's loads of kind of um prep videos on youtube if you want to do some intro questions right. so just listen to a couple of youtube videos yeah practice what you would say um I would definitely say practice. If you're anything like me, on the actual day, nerves kind of take <laughs> over. Yes. You've got a load of things that you want to say and it just doesn't happen. Yeah. But if you've if you've rehearsed it, you can almost do it mechanically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's already there. Yeah. So try and practice. Uh, try and get someone to ask you lots of questions. Yeah. Um, and look at the job role. So if you think for that particular job um, communication is going to be important then try and think of an example where you've communicated well yeah it's a, everyone can say i'm a really good communicator but yeah. what makes you good what have you done that has made something better because of your communication yeah um and i think that's that's quite useful for me because it shows that you're you've actually got some evidence behind you yeah and it doesn't you know when you're starting out you don't necessarily have huge amounts of kind of work experience no no but, but you do have other experience that you can draw from that can give you the same evidence yeah yeah i think the the point that you made about um you know when you're asked you know tell me a bit about yourself is not repeating what's on your cv isn't it because they already yeah. know they already know that that's on your cv yeah and everybody gets asked that question it's true so what better way than to kind of rehearse what you want them to know about you yeah it's your kind of chance to go this is me yeah this is what i'm about um and it also then it gives you a chance to relax as well yes yeah yeah uh and what else would i say um what do you think you would what you could do to kind of improve that job or that role yeah. have you got any ideas for that team or for that company yeah. i always find it quite good when someone's coming to me with ideas and or they're asking questions yes yeah um and you have a bit of a dialogue i think that's always quite useful um yeah. in an interview yes yeah. yeah. so sometimes when you're interviewing you're doing i don't know four back to back yeah um yes. having that dialogue makes the interviewer remember you yeah yeah um so that that would be another tip i think yeah uh, charisma that's it thank you so much for your time no problem thanks for having me it was really good to um be part of your profiles um and i look forward to hearing it thank you